Record. So today we're going to focus on standing work. And our posture is so very important for so many things. It's important for our musculoskeletal system. It's important for our digestion. It's important for how we breathe. And we need to find that balance. And you've heard me speak about this in other classes that we've done. Finding the balance between the energy we need to expend to engage the proper muscles and joints, and also having a feeling of ease, because if your body is too rigid, you can't possibly move with ease and grace. So we need to find that balance. We'll be talking about um, the importance of good standing alignment, and I'm going to review something we talk about in yoga, which is called the neutral pelvis. And just practicing that without doing the rest of yoga is also very helpful from time to time. Because if we don't stand properly, the body is not designed for that kind of stress. It puts stress on the lower back, it puts stress on the knees, and can make you pretty dang uncomfortable. So we'll be reviewing that as well. But I also want to say something about the effects of your posture on your mood. So what do I mean by that? I'm going to show you. So if I were feeling energetic, I would kind of walk along. I'd be kind of straight. You know, my shoulders would be back. But what if I start to round like this? And I'm moving along. That has a very different energetic feel to it. So we can, our bodies reflect our mood, but we can also adjust our mood by adjusting our posture. It goes both ways. I'm going to let a few more people in here. I know Mary Ellen will keep an eye out for any more. So let's begin. So even though I'm, I'm seated here, I'm going to imagine that I'm building my posture, my seated posture from the ground up, beginning with my feet firmly on the floor, engaging the legs by pressing down into the floor, perhaps rolling the shoulders a little bit. That's where my tension always wants to go. And go back in the other direction. And then bring those shoulders up as close to your ears as you can. Create fists with your hands. Build some tension in your arms. Press a little more firmly into the floor with your feet. Squeeze your belly. And then let all of that tension go as you exhale your breath. Beginning to turn your attention inward to the body and the breath. Coming into these moments of practice with full mindfulness and attention. Begin by noting any strong areas of sensation in your body. Noticing your energy and emotions. And allowing your thoughts to simply rest in the breath. Allowing that breath to get a little bit deeper now so that we begin in the belly, breathing in through the nose. And exhale, let's sigh out the breath just a few times. So breathing in, let it go with a sound, ha. <sighs> breathing in, sighing it out, ha. <sighs> Feeling the shoulders drop down as you do that. Breathing in and letting it go. <sighs> Continuing with the three-part breath, 
filling the belly, the chest, the shoulders, and exhaling from the top down, shoulders, chest, and belly. At the very end of the exhale, I like to just give my belly a little squeeze back towards the spine to exhale completely. Keeping your attention on your breath. Let's take three more conscious breaths. And at the end of that third exhale, release that technique so the natural breath can flow back into your body again. Take a moment to notice how your energy has shifted already just from doing a centering. And let's bring hands to heart center and join our voices in an OM. Nice deep breath. Oh, Om Shanti, peace. May we all know peace. So relaxing your hands down, let's take a breath in and lift the chin up. And exhale, drop the chin to the chest, breathe out. Breathing in as you lift. And exhaling as the head drops down, being very gentle with the neck. Remember, there's lots of little bones in the neck that don't like to be pushed around too much. Breathing in, lifting your chin. And exhale, lowering down. Bringing your head back to neutral, let's turn and look over the right shoulder. Breathe in and rotate the head to the left. So the rest of the body stays quiet as you're rotating your head from left to right. Letting the gaze follow right along. We always like to say in yoga that the eyes are the very top of your spine. So allowing the eyes to move in a way that supports the natural movement of your whole spine. And let's do one more time to the left. Breathing in and exhaling to the right. Guiding your neck back to center and allowing the left ear and left shoulder to get closer together. I always like to drop my right hand away and that increases the stretch in the side of my neck. So you can either pause here or if you want to, you can roll the head gently forward and back. My neck always likes to speak to me a little bit when I do this. A few crunches and pops. Breathing up to center and exhaling to the other side, letting the left arm drop down. And noticing the difference between the two sides. You might be carrying a lot more tension in one side than the other. You can add that forward and back, rocking movement.
Good. And then bring that back to center. So I'm going to breathe my arms out from the shoulders. Breathe in and turn the palms upward. Breathe out and rotate them down. Breathing in, turning up the palms. Exhale, turning them down. So letting your awareness go to your back body so you can notice what's happening in your shoulder blades as you do this. How the shoulder blades broaden and come closer together as you move the palms up and down. Good. Breathe in, exhale. Let your fingertips rest on your shoulders and we'll begin to make some circles with the elbows. You can start small and let the movement grow. Making sure you're still breathing. It's a lot easier if you keep breathing. Let's make one more great big circle here. Pause for just a minute and reverse the direction. So again, noticing what's going on in the shoulders, noticing the difference between the two sides, if there is one. One more big old circle here. And then pausing, I'm gonna rotate from side to side. So take a breath in, and let your upper body move to the right. Like on a swivel, breathe it back to center and swivel over to the left. Keeping your eyes and your chin lined up with the center of your chest. Breathing in and breathing out. Let's do that one more time from side to side. Center, other side, back to center, and release. Moving into the six movements of the spine, we'll begin with the dog and the cat. So the inhale brings us into dog tilt. The chest comes forward, the head looks up, the elbows and the shoulders move back. And then exhaling into cat, tuck your chin, Allowing your sit bones to roll. Good. Coming forward, breathing in. Exhale, breathing out. So by accentuating the sound of the breath, it really helps to anchor your attention. Right there. Breathing in. And breathing out. Let's do one more, please. Inhale, open wide. Exhale, and closing. And back to neutral. Good. Getting ready for the twist. We'll start with the right arm, stretching it out, bringing that palm to your left knee and left hand to your chair. The body lengthens on the inhale and rotates on the exhale. And I'm going to cross my left leg over my right just for a little bit of a deeper stretch. Shoulders stay relaxed, breath stays steady. Let's inhale it back to center now and go to the other side. Stretching out that left arm as far as you can. Again, finding that balance between the work of the pose and a sense of ease. Palm comes to the right knee, right hand to the chair. Lengthen on the in-breath, rotate on the out-breath. I'm gonna take my right knee over my left. Always creates more sensation in the hip area when you do that. And the breath in guides us back around to the front. 
We'll thread the needle here, starting with the right side, stretching it out, sliding that arm along your left thigh, easing yourself into whatever variation works. And I'm gonna take my left arm and sweep it up. Maybe this is not your thing today and that's fine. Allow the head and neck to stay relaxed. As you breathe in, let's release. Take a breath. And we'll go to the other side with the left arm stretching out, sliding along the right thigh, moving into the pose deliberately, mindfully. Head is relaxed. And inhale, release that, bring yourself up to center. So let's, let's pay a little bit of attention to these feet that are gonna be carrying us around all day. I'm gonna do a little foot massage here, so I invite you to join me. I'm gonna pick up my left foot. I'm just gonna to begin to rub the foot, particularly the sole of the foot, using my thumbs to work into the arches of the foot, across the base of the toes, and the longitudinal arch, which goes from the big toe all the way to the heel. Just rubbing away. Come on up to the ankle bone and rub around the inside ankle and outside ankle. Using your thumbs. Don't be afraid to use pressure. Good. And then I'm going to take my thumb and slide it along the top of the foot, all along the instep, going from the ankle joint all the way out between each toe. And then I'm gonna gently pull on each toe, give it a little wiggle. And then make a fist, pound away on the sole of your foot. Oh, that feels good. And then you're gonna take your palms and just rub it. Warm up that foot. Go around the ankle, go around the top. And then place that foot on the floor. Notice how happy it is. So we'll make the other foot happier too. So begin with massaging with your thumbs on the soles of your feet. Working around those arches. And if you find a spot that's a little bit um, especially tender, you can just hang out there a little bit and work a little more deeply and see if you can break up those knots in the feet. Let's come up to the ankle bone, inside and outside. And then begin to run the thumb from the ankle joint along the instep all the way out to the toes. That feels really good. And then we're gonna just pull on and kind of wiggle each of the toes. Playing this little piggy. I'm gonna make a fist with my left hand and pound away on the sole of the foot. And then making palms rub on either side of the foot, getting them warm. And then placing that foot gently down on the floor and just taking a moment to enjoy those sensations. Since we're gonna be doing standing work, we wanna make sure that the hips are nice and open. So the good stretch for that is the figure four stretch. So we'll start on the right side. 
crossing the ankles, the knees, or crossing by placing the ankle of the right foot on top of the left thigh. So we're trying to get just the right level of stretch, pressing down on the knee, pulling up on the foot, and perhaps even leaning forward. You'll know when the right place to stop is for you. Relax those shoulders, relax the neck. On an in-breath, let's come up and uncross. Take a breath and go to the other side. So wherever you'd like to create the cross of the legs, that's your practice, so you choose. Pressing down on the knee, up on the foot, lengthen your spine, and adding a forward fold if that feels good. And let's inhale and come on up, uncross. We'll work a bit on the seated forward fold, which is great for working out tight hamstrings. And the nice thing is that it can be done seated, so if a standing forward fold is not your cup of tea, you can do it this way. So we do it at various levels. I'm gonna turn sideways so you can see the position of my feet. I'm going to begin with the feet directly under the knees. So this is the most gentle version, and then we will advance it in stages. I'm going to separate my feet a little wider, and I'm going to do a wave breath forward and back just to work into the stretch. So here we go. Exhaling, coming forward. A cat and a dog stretch. Over the legs. So to move the stretch further up the hamstrings and to deepen it, I'm going to move my feet oh, a little bit of a distance ahead. There's still a bend in my knees and I'm going to continue with the wave here. You can stop at any point. If this is enough for you, then that's fine. Don't need to go any further. Exhaling, reaching it forward. So now I'm going to extend my feet a little further. There's still a little bit of bend in the knee. I'm going to hold on to the chair so I don't slide off. I'm going to reach forward and roll it back. Reach it forward and roll it back. And then this time I'm gonna go fully into the stretch. I'm holding on to the chair so I don't slide off. Relaxing the neck, breathing. If you have your legs extended like mine, you should be able to feel this all the way up to the base of your buttocks. And on an inhale, let's come on up. Good. So that's a nice way to do a hamstring stretch in a seated position. Let's come into our Pilates 100. So remembering that the heels can remain on the floor if that feels good, or if you want to challenge yourself, the legs come up, legs engage, arms engage. We move the arms four times as we breathe in and out. Here we go, breathe in two, three, four, and out, two, three, four. Breathe in, two, three, four. In, two, three, four. Out, two, three, four. Got to have a nice strong core to be able to stand properly. Here we go. In, two, three, four. Out, two, three, four. Let's slow it down. In, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four, and pause. Back is away from the back of the chair. Legs are active. 
breath is steady. One more breath. Good, lower the feet, lower the hands, and again, one more forward fold. Just let it go. Uh, bring your hands to your hips, engage your core, and hinge right up. Good. So let's come into Seated Warrior. I'm gonna turn and face the left front corner of the chair. We're gonna practice seated and then we're also gonna repeat these poses standing. But imagine as if you were standing, what is happening with your feet? Separate your toes, press down into the soles of your feet. Good, breathe out through the soles of your feet. Take a breath in and send that right foot back. Good, press back through the right heel and relax it. Press it back, let your spine lengthen, relax. And once more, press it back and hold. Adding your arms, if that feels good, you can direct your gaze upward, you can look at the horizon, you can look at the floor. Your choice. Keep pressing into the sole of that left foot. Wonderful, let's move into warrior two. So I'm gonna sweep my left arm in front, right arm comes behind. I always like to look behind me to make sure my arms are basically at the same height. My gaze is to the left. Energy going out in both directions from the shoulders. Wonderful, lower the arms, step your feet together, come out through center, and just pause for a bit. And we'll go over to the other side. Again, sitting up nice and straight, imagining that your feet are the just as much of a foundation as they would be if you were standing. Take a breath in, send the left foot back. Press back through the heel and relax it. Press that heel down towards the floor and relax. And one more time, we're going to press, we're going to hold, Press down into the sole of your right foot. Adding your arms, adjusting your gaze as you would like. Staying linked with the breath. Getting ready for warrior two. I'm gonna take the right arm in front, left arm behind. You could do a little position check if you like. Great, one more breath. And exhale, lower your arms, step your feet together, and take a breath. We're gonna come up to standing now. We'll do it through chair pose. So adjust your feet so they're slightly behind your chair, hands at the hips to begin. And remember, if you can't actually achieve lift off from the chair, you can press down into the chair and engage your core and your upper body. So you get a little bit of a workout that way. Feet are under the hips. Thighs are parallel. Take a breath in, engage those core muscles, stand up part way. So notice the weight on your feet. Can you keep the weight the same between the right and the left? 
Shoulders are back, knees are bent. Let's engage the arms if you like. You don't have to, but you can. Nice deep breaths. Good, once more, breathing in. And allow the exhale to drop the arms down, to straighten the legs, and I'm just gonna circle my hips. So a nice wide stance here. Remembering too that that other principle of standing work is to keep that micro bend in the knees. So let's talk about the neutral pelvis. What I notice a lot of times when people stand is that they push their kneecaps back and create a really deep bend in the lower back. So as you're doing that, you're gonna feel a lot of strain here. But if you soften the knees and imagine that you tuck the tailbone under, that takes all of the stress out of the lower back and lets the muscles do their job. So let's practice that. Place one hand at your lower belly and one hand over your sacrum. Now imagine that your pelvis is like a bowl and it's filled with liquid. So as you tip forward, arching the back, the liquid's gonna spill forward. As you draw it back, it's gonna go this way. So just rock back and forth with the pelvis. So we're trying to isolate the movement right to the pelvis area. And then gradually let those movements get smaller and smaller until you find a position where you can imagine that the liquid is level and then stop. Allow your hands to be at your side, shoulders relaxed. Just practicing standing like this for a few minutes every day really helps your posture. And if you have lower back pain, it'll really help your lower back pain. Okay. Let's come to the side of the chair. We're gonna do our leg lifts. So I know some of you are taking the fall prevention class and we do these activities in the fall prevention class. So I'm gonna shift my weight to my right foot and I'm gonna lift the left and bring it down. Lift the left and bring it down. Upper body stays quiet as I do this. Don't lock the supporting leg. Great, and let's go to the side five times. And let's go to the back. So if you can't manage to lift the foot up, you can just slide the foot back. That's also fine. And three and four and five, and release that. Good. We're gonna come into the Half Moon series from here. So you can continue to hold on with one hand if you choose, or if you'd like, you can release the hands. Let's breathe the arms up. I'm gonna interlace my fingers and point my index fingers up towards the ceiling. Make sure both feet are grounded. Take a breath in and arch to the right. Take a breath in, lengthen up and arch to the left. Breathe it back to center. We're coming into the back bend portion. So if this is too challenging, you can bring your arm out to airplane position or actually support your lower back. Take a breath in, let your hips move forward as you reach your arms back. Good, breathe it back to center. And then we'll arch to the left, lengthen up. To the right, lengthen up, and release your hands. 
take a nice wide step out. So when we do poses like the goddess pose or five-pointed star or triangle, again, it's a good reminder to keep the knees a little bit soft. And in terms of your foot position, the toes can face directly ahead or you can turn them out slightly. So you can play with that to see what feels best in your body. Let's move into five-pointed star. So this may seem like you're just standing there, but it's a very active pose. Let's make it more active. Hold the hands in opposite direction from one another. Press down into the feet. Drop your shoulders. Find your breath. You can either stay in five-pointed star, or if you like, join me in moving into goddess pose. I'm gonna bend my arms at the elbow, and I'm gonna come into a little bit of a squat. So the elbows go back here, and we breathe. Good, press into your feet. Straighten up and we'll move into triangle pose. So I'm gonna turn my right foot, so the toes are facing the chair. Left foot turns in slightly and the hips, I'm gonna just remind the hips by using my hands to face forward. Reach up, ground through your feet. Notice if you're curling your toes, try to flatten the foot out and arch and breathe. Keep drawing that top shoulder back. Keep the knees a little bit soft. You can release your hand from the chair if you do not need it for balance. Great, put some energy in that left arm. Bring it back up. And do a little counter stretch. Great. So turn so you're facing forward and we'll move into warrior pose. So turning, bringing that left foot back. And again, the position of the back foot, it can be angled off to the side or you can bring the heel directly back, whatever feels most secure. Flatten your feet, create a little bend in the forward knee. Release and add your arms if that feels safe and breathe. Send your exhaled breath out through the soles of your feet. Great, release the hands, step the feet together, and take a breath. Let's come on to the other side. So we'll begin with the leg lifts on this side. Weight is being carried by the left leg. Knee is soft. And we begin five to the front. So there's really a little bit of balance work here in addition to the strengthening work of the lifting. Let's go off to the side. And how about going to the back here? Again, you can just slide the foot back if that feels better than lifting it. But if you lift it, you're gonna feel the work all the way up into your glutes. And let that go. Good. So taking a nice comfortable stance, doesn't really matter how wide apart your feet are. Softening the knees and let's add the arms. Good, very active five-pointed star. Reaching out, reaching down into the earth, lifting up through your crown. Good, moving into goddess if you'd like or staying with five-pointed star, either one is fine.
Keep flattening the feet. Resist that urge to curl your toes. Press into your feet. And let's prepare for triangle. Left toes face the chair. Right foot turns in slightly and I'm going to square my hips again. So the hips go forward. Right arm reaches up and over. Adding a little balance work if you choose. Nice breathing in the side body, good. Extend that arm up and over. Release your left arm into a counter stretch. So turning your feet so they're facing forward, we'll move into warrior. Right foot steps back. Playing with the position of that back foot. Again, toes can turn out, toes can face forward. Square your hips. Create some bend in that forward knee. Adding one arm or both arms. Reaching up, grounding through the feet. Sending out the breath. Wonderful, deep breath in. Lower your arms, step your feet together, and let's finish up with a downward dog. So you can stand at the back of your chair. I'm gonna bring my hands to the seat of the chair and walk my feet away. Knees are soft. I'm going to pedal the heels, chest drops down, head is relaxed. And walking back to my chair, take a seat. Nice work, everybody. It was like standing poses. So let's take a minute to uh, just settle in after the practice. Notice what's shifted for us. Again, even though you're seated, making sure your feet are flat on the floor as if you were standing. And closing your eyes or looking softly at the floor. Do a little check-in, starting with the soles of your feet and working your way up through the legs and the hips and the chest, out through the shoulders and arms, noticing the muscles of your face, Just breathing fully, noticing completely. And I always like to remind people that yoga is amazing in that it takes us from where we are to where we need to be. Whatever that is for each one of us, it's different. Letting your breath get a little bit deeper and adding those final stretches. You know best how to finish your practice. Mm. Letting your hands come to rest in front of your heart center. We'll close our practice with an OM. OM. OM Shanti Peace. May all beings everywhere know peace. Namaste. Jai Bhagwan. 
hail great beings.